Hey Fitness Zone, um, I'm going to be covering this next um, piece in our fitness unit. This is cardio respiratory training and adaptations. Um, so cardio respiratory, this is kind of like the main content we'll be covering in um, this unit. These are some terms that hopefully you're familiar with, but if you're not, that's why we're here and we're going to go over them. So um, what's the big picture and um, what's the importance of improving our cardiorespiratory function? Um, first off, regular endurance exercise improve met metabolism at the cellular level. Um, I know a lot of you had questions about how do we um, increase our metabolism. Um, one of the ways that you can do it is with cardiorespiratory exercise and activity um, and mixing it up. Um, doing HIIT training some days, maybe doing uh, treadmill work or elliptical work, but the biggest thing is not um, doing the same thing every single day, mixing up the intensity, mixing up um, the duration, um, just challenging yourself and that way you don't have um, reach that uh, peaking point. Uh, reduce the effort required to carry out everyday activities. Um, so when you're going up and down stairs, it's not strenuous for you. Reduces the risk of chronic diseases, we talked about this in health. Um, helps to regulate body fat percentage. Improve immune function in the appropriate amount. Improvements in managing in anxiety, depression, and stress have been reported. Um, especially when you're, if you're someone that can get outside and be active, um, just getting that fresh air. Um, also, when you do work on a gym, you know, it's kind of a sense of community when you're working out with other people that are working towards the same goal. So there's multiple benefits that way on the mental side. Oh, goodness. Um, so cardio respiratory, um, these are some examples or um, ways of setting goals. So. Fitness participants should consider engaging in exercise that reflects interest. So if you're someone that prefers to bike, you know, bike. If you're not someone that enjoys running, don't run. Do maybe HIIT training or do um, interval training on the elliptical or um, interval training on the bike, you know, mixing it up. Um, it should be personalized to your schedule and your fitness needs. If you're a morning person, you know, schedule it in the morning. If you're an afternoon person, schedule it in the afternoon. But be consistent and try to make sure that it's at the same time every day so that it kind of becomes habit of when you're needing to get it done. Um, if one enjoys the activity, the more likely the individual can stick with the routine. So it's important that you, um, if you're someone that really doesn't enjoy um, going on a machine, then don't. You know, do a hit tr hit workout or something. Um, they have plenty of YouTube uh, hit workouts, circuit training workouts. Um, that are available for free. So, um, should be specific to current personal fitness level and ability. So, if you're someone that's not very active or have never been active in the last, you know, month or so, um, probably don't want to start something that's vigorous. You want to start with a lighter, moderate, and work your way up. So you're less likely to um, quit or give up um, doing your workout. Uh, progression needs to be considered. We're going to talk about that. Uh, what are examples? Uh, so you have aerobics, bicycling, cross country skiing, jogging, rollerblading, um, sports such as hockey, soccer, lacrosse. Um, cross country skiing, that's actually a really fun one. Or snowshoeing could even turn into that as well if you're going for a long distance. Um, just getting outside and getting that fresh air is awesome. I know it gets cold in Minnesota, but if you're someone that doesn't mind it, um, you know, grabbing a friend or someone to go on the trails with, I mean, it helps with your social interaction and also your fitness levels too. Uh, training principles, so we have the, it kind of goes off the same as the muscular, um, strength training principles and adaptations that we already talked about. Um, it's just kind of changing over to the cardiovascular side. So you have your definition, um, the ability to deliver and use oxygen under demands of intensive prolonged exercise or work. So anything cardio, we're talking about heart and lungs. Um, so this is more your endurance training. 
um, overload, so it's kind of the same. Uh, a person must work the body in a higher manner than normal in order to improve their fitness level. Um, overload of the cardiovascular system is achieved by manipulating intensity, duration, and frequency. So it's kind of the same thing with when you're training your muscles. works the same way. Um, intensity, so the greatest improvement in VO2 max is obtained when exercise is intense intensity is between 90 and 100, so maximal effort. Um, this can be achieved with interval training, alternating work, and your rest period. So you can have, um, you can increase or decrease your rest um, as time goes on. Exercise intensity can be measured as a percentage. Um, so you have your maximal heart rate at 220 minus your age, and your heart rate reserve 200 minus 0.5 times age. Part two uh, should be prescribed within your range of what you are physically able to do. Um, intensity should reflect duration. The more intense an activity is, the shorter it should be. So if you're doing like an insanity workout, um, those workouts you can get away with. You know, if you do a max 30 minute workout, you can get away with only doing 30 minutes of it because it is more intense. Um, you're at, uh, Choice of fitness up or your choice of cardio exercise should reflect your fitness level. As exercise intensity increases, so do improvements in VO2. VO2 max is the highest amount of oxygen an individual can take in, transport, and utilize to produce ATP aerobically while breathing air during heavy exercise. Uh, frequency again, this is how often. So improvement of VO2 max is proportional to number of training sessions per week. So the more often you do it, obviously the better you'll get. Um, if you're weight training, um, sometimes you don't want to do this every single day with your weight training. You might want to incorporate in, um, just an all lift day or vice versa, just doing a cardio day. Um, however, individuals just starting a fitness program should start out with only two days a week. Uh, improvements in VO2 max can be achieved when exercise is sustained for a duration of 14 to 15 minutes. Greater improvements are achieved from longer sessions, 35 to 45. Um, most adults should be going for 20 to 60 minutes for optimal improvements. Uh, progression principle. So if you want to progress, um, again, you have to manipulate that frequency, intensity, or duration of exercise. Um, to avoid peaking or um, getting stagnant in your fitness program. Um, so you're looking at trying to uh, improve or increase one of those um, frequency, intensity, or duration within like two to three weeks of first starting out. Um, also, you can mess with um, your uh, rest periods as well. Two to three week of increase followed by decrease for recovery and then before increasing training volume again. And that's it. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll have this available um, shortly.